Hi, I'm just finishing up a group portrait of a family, a very famous family. As a matter of fact, you've seen them on television. But you may not know that you can read about this family in eight different books. Let's see, there's Charles, better known as Pa, Mary, Ma, and see if you can guess the fourth character. If you said Laura Ingalls, you've got the right family. Now, the adventures with the Ingalls family begin with the very first book in the series, Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder. And it's through Laura that we learn about the Ingalls family in all eight books. In this book, they're living in the forests of Wisconsin, huge forests. And it's about 100 years ago. Their little house is miles and miles from the nearest neighbor. Summers are short, and winters are very long. Now, in the summers, Laura and Mary can go outside and play. Their cousins come to visit, and suddenly the little house can be filled with people, laughing and telling stories of the things that have most recently happened to them. But then winter would set in every year, and the long, long winter seemed to never go away. Laura and Mary sometimes had to stay indoors for weeks and find things to play with in the house. There was no school to go to, so Pa and Ma would try to teach them to read and to write. Oh, every now and then something exciting happened in winter. Christmas was always fun. And if the snow were deep and packed, they could take the sleigh and go over to Grandpa's house. But it always seemed to Laura like winter would never be over. Then the most dangerous time of year came, that turn from winter into spring. That was the time the bears came out of hibernation. And you can imagine how hungry a bear is who's just slept for six months. Well, this was also a time when Pa had to be outside a lot. He had to be collecting his furs from the traps. And Laura worried about Pa and his chances of running into a hungry bear. Well, the time finally came when Pa had to put all his furs together and head off for the town to use them to trade with, to get nice things to bring back home. And Laura worried especially then because Pa had so many furs to take that he couldn't take his gun. That meant if he did run up against a bear, he couldn't protect himself. Can you imagine meeting a bear in the wild? Well, back then it wasn't all that uncommon, but it was enough to make your heart stop and Laura never forgot her first bear. Then one day, Pa said that spring was coming. In the big woods, the snow was beginning to thaw. Bits of it dropped from the branches of the trees and made little holes in the softening snowbanks below. At noon, all the big icicles along the eaves of the little house quivered and sparkled in the sunshine. Drops of water hung trembling at their tips. Pa said he must go to town to trade the furs of the wild animals he'd been trapping all winter. So one evening, he made a big bundle of them. There were so many furs that when they were packed tightly and tied together, they made a bundle almost as big as Pa. Very early one morning, Pa strapped the bundle of furs on his shoulders and started to walk to town. There were so many furs to carry that he could not take his gun. Ma was worried, but Pa said that by starting before sunup and walking very fast all day, he could get home again before dark. The nearest town was far away. Laura and Mary had never seen a town. They'd never even seen a store. They had never seen even two houses standing together. But they knew that in a town there were many houses and a store full of candy and calico and other wonderful things, powder and shot and salt and store sugar. They knew that Pa would trade his furs to the storekeeper for beautiful things from town. And all day they were expecting the presents he would bring them. When the sun sank low above the treetops and no more drops fell from the tips of the icicles, they began to watch eagerly for Pa. The sun sank out of sight. The woods grew dark, and he did not come. Ma started supper and set the table, but he did not come. 
Well, it was time to do the chores, and still he had not come. Ma said that Laura might come with her while she milked the cow. Laura could carry the lantern. So Laura put on her coat, and Ma buttoned it up. And Laura put her hands into her red mittens that hung by a red yarn string around her neck, while Ma lighted the candle and the lantern. Laura was proud to be helping Ma with the milking. She carried the lantern very carefully. Its sides were of tin with places cut in them for the candlelight to shine through. When Laura walked behind Ma on the path to the barn, the little bits of candlelight from the lantern leaped all around her on the snow. The night was not yet quite dark. The woods were dark, but there was a gray light on the snowy path, and in the sky there were a few faint stars. The stars did not look as warm and bright as the little lights that came from the lantern. Laura was surprised to see the dark shape of Suki, the brown cow, standing at the barnyard gate. Ma was surprised, too. It was too early in the spring for Suki to be let out in the big woods to eat grass. She lived in the barn. But sometimes, on warm days, Pa left the door of her stall open so she could come into the barnyard. Now Ma and Laura saw her behind the bars, waiting for them. Ma went up to the gate and pushed against it to open it. But it did not open very far because there was Suki standing against it. Ma said, Suki, get over here. She reached across the gate and slapped Suki's shoulder. Just then, one of the dancing little bits of light from the lantern jumped between the bars of the gate. And Laura saw long, shaggy black fur and two little glittering eyes. Well, Suki had thin, short, brown fur. Suki had large, gentle eyes. Ma said, Laura, Laura walked back to the house. So Laura turned around and began to walk toward the house. And Ma came behind her. When they had gone part way, Ma snatched her up, lantern and all, and ran. Ma ran with her into the house and slammed the door. Laura said, Ma, Ma, was it a bear? Yes, yes, Laura, it was a bear. Laura began to cry. She hung on to Ma and sobbed, oh, will he eat Suki? No, no, Suki's safe in the barn. Just think, Laura, think of all those big, heavy logs in the barn wall. Think of the door, it's heavy and solid. It's made to keep bears out. No, the bear cannot get in and eat Suki. Well, Laura felt better then. He could have hurt us, couldn't he? He didn't hurt us. You were a good girl, Laura, to do exactly as I told you, and to do it quickly, without asking why. Ma was trembling, and she began to laugh a little. Just to think, I've slapped a bear. That was quite some experience, slapping a bear. Now, you remember that Pa had gone off to town to trade his furs without taking his gun, which worried Laura a great deal. And he was supposed to be home before sunset. Well, here it was, the dead of night, and he still hadn't come home. As a matter of fact, Pa didn't get home until the next morning. And if Laura thought she had an exciting tale to tell him about her bear, she hadn't heard Pa's story yet. It was nearly sundown before I could start home. I tried to hurry, but the walking was hard, and I was tired. So I'd not gone far before night came. And I was alone in the big woods, without my gun. There were still six miles to walk, and I came along as fast as I could. The night grew darker and darker, and I wished for my gun. I knew that some of the bears had come out of their winter dens. I'd seen their tracks when I went to town in the morning. You know, bears are hungry and cross this time of the year. You know, they've been sleeping in their dens all winter long with nothing to eat, and that makes them thin and angry when they wake up. I did not want to meet one. I hurried along as quick as I could in the dark. By and by, the stars gave a little light. It was still black as pitch where the woods were thick, but in the open places, I could see dimly. I could see the snowy road ahead a little way, and I could see the dark woods standing all around me. I was glad when I came into an open place where the stars gave me this faint light. All the time I was watching, as well as I could, for bears. I was listening for the sounds they make when they go carelessly through the bushes. And then I came again into an open place, and there, 
Right in the middle of my road, I saw a big black bear. He was standing up on his hind legs, looking at me. I could, I could see his eyes shining. I could see his pig snout. I could even see one of his claws in the starlight. My scalp prickled, and my hair stood straight up. I stopped in my tracks and stood still. The bear did not move, and there he stood, looking at me. I knew it'd do no good to try to go around him. I knew he'd follow me into the dark woods where he could see better than I could. I did not want to fight a winter-starved bear in the dark. And oh, how I wished for my gun. I had to pass that bear to get home. I thought if I could scare him, he might get out of the road and let me go by. So I took a deep breath, and suddenly I shouted with all my might and ran at him, waving my arms. He did not move. Well, I didn't run very far toward him, I'll tell you. I stopped, and I looked at him. He stood looking at me. And then I shouted again, and there he stood. I kept on shouting and waving my arms, but he did not budge. But it'd do me no good to run away. There were other bears in the woods. I might meet one any time. I might as well deal with this one as with another. Besides, I was coming home to Ma and you girls. And I'd never get here if I ran away from everything in the woods that scared me. So at last I looked around, and I got a good big club, solid heavy branch that had been broken from a tree by the weight of the snow in the winter. I lifted it up in my hands, and I ran straight at that bear. I swung my club as hard as I could and brought it down, bang, right on his head. And there he still stood, for he was nothing but a big black burned stump. I passed it on my way to town that morning. It wasn't a bear at all. I only thought it was a bear because I'd been thinking all the time about bears and being afraid I'd meet one. It wasn't a bear at all. There I'd been yelling and dancing and waving my arms all by myself in the big woods, trying to scare a stump. You know, it took real courage for Pa to pick up a stick and tackle something he thought was a bear. He was lucky that time. And these are just two adventures that happened to the Ingalls family in this first book, Little House in the Big Woods. And like I said before, this is just the first book in eight, all full of adventures about the Ingalls family, and they're all terrific.